Hello and welcome to a short video from Paper Hen. Today I want to talk about how I use Pepper Cura Designer to produce paper craft patterns for my low poly models. The starting point is to take a 3D computer model created in your favourite modelling software and use Pepper Cura Designer to create a 2D pattern which when cut out, folded and glued produces a 3D paper model. Firstly, what is Pepper Cura Designer? Well, it's software which allows you to create papercraft models from 3D mesh models by unfolding. Unfolding involves cutting the mesh into patches and then flattening them. This can be done automatically or by specifying which edges need cutting first. Automatic unfolding tends to produce a pattern which needs a lot of editing, so I always seam the edges first and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Here is a 3D model of a wearable dragon head that I'm going to use as an example. I've modelled this in Blender and scaled it so that it's big enough to fit the head of an adult. I've then exported it as a Wavefront OBJ file, which is going to be the starting point for using Pepecura. The basic steps in Pepecura are Open your 3D model Define the edges to cut Unfold the model Adjusting the scale setting the page size, editing the pattern, saving and printing the pattern. The first step is to open the Dragon model, which I've saved in OBJ format. Pepecura supports a few different file formats, but OBJ works just fine. When the model is loaded, an Adjust Model Coordinates dialog appears. The first is Flip Faces, which defines the normal direction of the faces. Flip means turning the model inside out, the faces would appear dark grey if they needed flipping, but in this case they're OK. The next step is to tell Pepecura where the front of the model is. This is shown by the red arrow. Here the front of the model lines up, so it's OK, but if, say, the dragon's nose was pointing to the yellow face, then I click yellow in the dialogue. Next you need to tell Pepecura where the base of the model is, which is again shown by a red arrow. Here the dragon base and arrow line up, so it's OK. If the dragon was rotated and the bottom was on the blue plane, then I click blue in the dialogue. Finally, there is the invert step, which changes which side Pepecura interprets as left and which is right. This seems to affect the unfolding direction, but since the dragon is symmetrical, it doesn't matter here. Pepecura has two views, a 3D view on the left and a 2D page view on the right. The page is where the pattern appears once you have unfolded it, and at present it shows a single empty page. You set the page size before unfolding. This is the size of paper that you're going to print the pattern onto. The default is A4 portrait, which is what I want, and the rest of the settings are fine as well. You could just unfold the model at this point, but the result will be a complicated pattern, which you'll spend a long time cutting out and building. As you can see, the default unfolding gives shapes of different sizes which don't fit onto the pages. It's better to mark places on the 3D model which are meaningful features and which will make building easier. As an aside, the status bar at the bottom shows how to move the view around. Mouse wheel down for pan, right mouse click and drag to rotate, and wheel rotate for zoom. In this case, the features I think are meaningful are the horns, eye region, forehead and nose, top and bottom jaws, and side of the head. I'm going to mark the main features on the model. Go into 3D menu and select Edit Mode, then Open Edge. This allows you to specify the edges to open. In Edge Operations, hovering over the edge changes the colour to green and left-clicking marks it as an edge to be opened. Some edges are marked red and this shows that they are not connected to anything. Holes and the extremities of the model are always red. If you mark and edge in error, then just left-click again to unmark it. 
If your model is symmetrical, you can turn on Pick Symmetrical Edge so that two corresponding edges are selected at the same time. This speeds things up considerably. Now's the time to save my work so far. Pepe Cura projects are saved as PDO files which can be opened and printed using the free Pepe Cura viewer. There are a lot of decent PDOs available on the internet. We're now going to unfold the dragon head. Unfolding generates the pattern on the page view. If auto is selected, Pepe Cura scales the parts to fit onto a single page. Otherwise you can specify the size of the model you want before unfolding it. I never use the auto unfolding option. I know from the information in my original 3D model that the width of the head is 340mm. So I set the width in Pepper Cura to be the same. The rest of the settings are ok. Pepper Cura has unfolded the model using the opened edges as a guide. I resize the views and zoom in for a closer look. Some parts are too large for the page, for example the forehead. Others, like the eye region, have a lot of split edges and overlapping flaps where gluing and cutting would be difficult. On the pattern, the flaps are shown here. The dashed lines are where you fold. There are two different types of fold line. A valley fold which has alternative different size dashes and a mountain fold which here has the same size dash. Solid lines are where you cut out. If you left click on the part in either the 2 or 3D views, the part gets highlighted in the other view. Also, if you double left click on a face, the face gets highlighted as well. Before editing the parts, I want to do a final check of the scale. I know from measuring my 3D model that the widest part of the base opening is 178mm, which I've done so that it can fit over an adult head. Pepe Cura provides a means to measure the distance between two points, so I'll use this to check that my scaling was correct. The distance is 178mm, so it's fine. If it was wrong, I can change the scale from the 2D menu. I'm now going to arrange the parts a bit. I like to have one half of a model on one set of pages and the other on a different set. I also like to keep connected parts as close to each other as possible. Begin by selecting the parts and roughly arranging them. In 2D view, click to select and drag to move. You can use the green stick at the top to rotate the part. Click drag to select multiple. I'm just working my way around the model, selecting parts and grouping them roughly together. That's good enough for now. I'll continue to arrange them as I edit the pattern further. Before editing, it's important to decide on the size of the flaps you're going to use for the model. Obviously, smaller models need smaller flaps, but this makes gluing a little more difficult. I generally use 5 or 6mm flaps. Right click in the 2D view and select Edit Flaps. From the dialog box, select Shape and set the height to what you want. Apply this to all the flaps. You'll notice that all of the flaps get a little larger. Take each part in turn starting with the one you'll assemble first. In this case I've chosen the eye region of the dragon. The problem with this part is that there are a lot of cuts and small flaps due to the angles between the faces. The aim is to turn edges into folds where you can 
and to make the parts as large as possible without losing the features too much and keeping it on one page. First off, we're going to turn some of the cuts into folds. Go into Join Disjoin Face Mode. Hovering over the 3D model shows the edges and folds being selected. Hovering over the part on the pattern does the same. Left clicking will either cut a fold or seal a cut as you can see. Depending on the face angles, sealing a cut may cause a fold elsewhere to open. With the eye, I'll choose to separate the inner part from the outer part to make gluing easier. I'll just move these slightly to keep them together. Rotate using the green stick at the top of the selection. Moving on to the forehead and nose part. At present this is too big for the page. Also two of the flaps at the bottom of the part overlap onto the opposite face which I don't like. I'll split these to reduce the size. I'll also separate the nose region from the forehead and add the small part as well since it's part of the forehead. One thing I forgot to mention is that if you hover over a connected edge, you'll see a red line which shows which of the edges is connected to. Left clicking forces them to join in the direction indicated by the arrow. Generally though, I tend to work on the 3D view. You continue on like this, resizing to create a large piece but with no overlapping flaps and no split faces, until the model is complete. Since this model is symmetrical, I would do one side first and then just repeat for the other side. I'll pause the video and complete the rest of the model and come back to look at rearranging. The next step is to arrange the parts to minimise the number of pages used. On symmetrical models, I prefer to keep the left and right sides separate even if this takes more pages and also to try to keep connected parts together. This makes it easier to organise and assemble the parts after they've been cut out since you end up with two piles of parts which are in some sort of order. I start by fitting the largest parts first and then using the smaller parts to fill in the gaps. Go into Select and Move mode to grab and rotate the parts into position. Try to align long straight edges with the edge of the page, leaving a small gap between. The dashed lines represent the page margin. You can change this in the print and paper settings, but the defaults work fine for me. There are a couple of features which Pepper Cura provides to help with arranging parts, although I very rarely use these. One is a grid and snap to grid feature, which is set from the 2D menu. Snapping works using the bounding box of the part and the grid. Another tip for aligning is to use rotate mode. If you double click on an edge and it has an angle of less than 45 degrees, then it rotates to horizontal alignment and if greater than 45 degrees, it rotates to vertical alignment. Continue to arrange the parts until you're happy with the overall layout. Make sure that there is a gap of at least 5mm between parts to make cutting out a bit easier. I'll pause again and complete the laying out. I'm happy with the general layout now. As you can see, the pattern has been separated into two halves. I've also tried to keep connected parts together wherever possible. The next step is to move some flaps around. Generally, you want to aim for a part having a flap on every other edge so that the two parts fit together better when being assembled. Parts where there are continuous flaps fitting onto another with a continuous edge are more difficult to align accurately when you're building the model. Looking at the eye, this last flap on the outside should be moved. Go into Edit Flaps and select Position.
Hover over the edge to see where it connects and if it makes sense to do so, click to move the flap. The outside of the eye has a flap followed by an edge with another flap and so on, so it looks fine. The next part can be changed a little to give, an, to give an even sequence of flaps and edges. Sometimes moving a flap causes the part to overlap another one, so we have to rearrange these a little as well. I'll continue to edit the flaps until I'm happy with the flap spacing. Obviously, there'll be some parts where the flaps are not perfect since there will be an odd number of edges in places. I'll pause again and finish moving the flaps around. The final stage is to switch on the edge numbers and to set the font size. First, I'll switch off the texture since I'm going to create a plain pattern. Go to the 2D menu and select Show Edge ID to show the edge numbers. As you can see, the same number appears on the edge and its corresponding opposite edge with the flap. Edges with the same number are fixed together when the model has been assembled. I'll increase the size of the font used for the edge IDs. Go into the setting menu, select Other Settings and the Other tab in the dialog. Generally I like to use a font size of 6. Everything looks ok now. The final thing is to save my work and print the pattern. I prefer to print to a PDF first and then open the PDF in Acrobat Reader to examine the pattern for any problems. The things I'm looking for are parts which overlap pages and making sure that there is adequate spacing between the parts. The final step is to print the pattern and go build it. Pepecura has some more advanced features and facilities which I'll cover in another video. But for the moment, that's all you need to know to transform your 3D model to a 2D pattern ready for building a real 3D model from paper or card. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps you to use Pepecura Designer.